Hi everyone, so in this video we're going to look at the 32 point groups. Now this is a very important classification scheme that accounts for the structure of minerals. Now we've looked in another video at how minerals are classified and the major grouping is according to chemistry. So we have so-called silicates which have SiO4 anionic units and then we have phosphates and tungstates and sulfides and sulfates etc. Well, in addition to those kinds of chemical groupings, we also group minerals according to their structure or their point group. And in this very nice table by Klein and Dutro, we see the 32 possible point groups. So what are these possible point groups? They are the different ways in which we can arrange atoms or cluster, clusters of atoms around a point. And we have various, various symbols. Uh, the letter I for a center of symmetry or an inversion point, M for a, a, a symmetry plane or a mirror, and then we have one, two, three, four, and six-fold rotational symmetry, and then we have roto-inversion, you know, bar one, bar two, bar three, bar four, and bar six. That's a lot of symmetry elements. How many different ways could we combine them? Well, if we just simply took mathematics and looked at uh, combinations, if we took all of these symbols and looked at the different ways that we can combine them, we'd end up with uh, thousands upon thousands of combinations. Most of those combinations are not possible. As we looked at in an earlier video, you have combinations, for example, such as 444 that are not possible. They do not satisfy certain restrictions in spherical geometry. On the other hand, you can have a fourfold and two twofold axes that intersect one another. So this is one of our allowable tr uh, trios that we looked at earlier, a compatible trio. So the 32 point groups represent all of those combinations that are geometrically possible and that don't involve repeats as well. So for example, we don't need two separate classes for a bar two and an M. We can simply have an M uh, and we don't need to give it any kind of separate notation since those are the same. Similarly, uh, bar 6 is equal to a 3 over m, so we don't need two different kinds of notation for that. So the 32 point groups leaves out all of the repeats and all the stuff that is not possible. All of these 32 point groups are essentially synonymous with a crystal class. So we can name the crystal class or a point group according to one of these symbols. So if we just take one of these symbols here, like this 4 over m, that means we have these symmetry elements, which is very nice about this table. It lists them out for us. If we have a 4 over m, what kind of symmetry elements are we going to see? We should find an i, a center of symmetry. We should find one fourfold axis, and no more than and no less, and a mirror plane, just one, no more, no less. If we have a 6, 2, 2, what would we have? We would have one six-fold rotational symmetry axis and six two-fold uh, symmetry axes, so six two-fold rotational axes. And those uh, two letters there, uh, we just have two two-fold axes that are notated in the symbol, but we get six total. Uh, the other four are not part of the symbol because they are implied. The six-fold rotational axis is going to act on the two-fold axis to produce these additional ones. So it's kind of a shorthand. So when we talk about crystal classes, we use these kinds of symbols. And if you look up a mineral in something like uh, the Peterson Field Guide or any kind of field guide or any kind of textbook, you'll see a composition and then you'll see a crystal class uh, symbolized using one of these point group symbols over here or over here. And then if you have these point group symbols and you're wondering what kind of symmetry content you might see, then you can use a table like this from Klein and Dutro to figure out precisely what kinds of symmetry elements you should be able to find.